Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today is September the 19th, 2023. It's a little cooler out, certainly not as sunny as it has been, but it's still quite tolerable. I had some comments come in uh, asking about the 12 volt system on the trailer. So I wanted to take some time and make a video and discuss that at a high level. We're not gonna get into the scientific details about how the system works or why it works, but we're gonna talk about the needs and wants uh, when you're traveling off-grid. So we're gonna talk about the 12 volt fridge and what it uses for power. We're gonna talk about the recent battery upgrade that I did. We're gonna talk about the two sets of panels that we have and last but not least, the solar charge controller and the Victron Smart Shunt that monitors all of that. So uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I really appreciate you stopping by to check out the video. So if you have any more things you wanna know, just let me know. All right. So at the heart of the electrical system, we're going to talk about the battery upgrade that I recently did. So this box is aluminum. I bought it from Getaway RV in Abbotsford. It's the correct one for the Alto F1743. They're actually using it on a lot of their models now. The nice thing about it is it fits perfectly and it's got some screws all the way around, which I've used stainless to prevent it from rusting and dripping down the side. These back ones here are difficult to get out, but that's a good thing if you're trying to protect your investment. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the screws off, open it up so we can have a look inside and I'll explain what I've done. Okay, so we've got all the screws out now. We're just gonna work the lid loose. It's got a little bit of a weather gasket on it, so it helps seal and keep dust and dirt and moisture out. Nice feature to have. It's a very well-designed, well-built battery box. Inside we have two Voltium 100 amp hour self-heated Bluetooth lithium batteries. And I've tied these batteries together with these two gauge wires that I got off of Amazon. The lugs on these are 5 16 so be mindful. Some batteries have larger, some batteries have smaller. On the back here, we've got the black wire that runs back to the smart shunt battery minus side. We also have another auxiliary black wire, which is disconnected at this point, but I thought I'd leave it in there just in case we change something in the future. It used to be chassis ground. On the front of the battery, we have the red wire that runs back to the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. We also have the blue wire that comes from the solar charge, and this is a fusible link on here as well. Underneath that, we have a 200 amp fuse from Blue Sea that protects this whole compartment. Inside each battery is a BMS or a battery management system that would probably take care of that, but I prefer to protect this with a fuse. So that's what we've done here. This battery box is designed and made for these trailers, so it fits well. These are group 24 batteries and they fit very nicely inside. This box also comes with some insulation at the back to prevent the batteries from moving around. And on this side, I made a shunt to keep them from sliding side to side. I don't know if there's any room for anything else in here, but it does the job for the batteries and that's really good. One of the challenges with camping in British Columbia is that we have a lot of tall trees in our parks and we don't get a lot of direct sunlight and even when we do it's not the same angle as you would find in the southern states. So we thought we'd add an external port that we could use to hook up a portable panel. So what I did was I cut a hole in the front of the trailer and I installed a two pin SAE polarized plug. We weatherproofed it and then we hooked it up to the solar charge controller, bore a hole in the front cover here so we could get access to it. The nice thing about this is we don't have to hook it up. So if we have really good sun, we'll just leave the portable panel in the vehicle. But if we want to, we can add it. And that's because it's hooked up in parallel, not series. So this panel works in conjunction with the roof panels to provide power to the solar charge controller and then into the batteries. So all the electrical equipment is in one place at the front of the trailer underneath the little cushion. So in here we have the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. We have a little fuse block from Blue Sea. And then we have our EP Ever MPPT charger, which is hooked up to everything. What I like about this uh, charger is that it has in and out for loads as well. So you can measure them on the uh, MT50 panel. 
So what we have here is we have one panel for the roof, another panel for the roof, and in the front panel, uh, portable panels that we use. We have our load, and then we have power to the system. So it's a little bit bigger than I want, but it's doing the job, so we're going to leave it alone. Over here, we have the smart shunt mounted as well. And as I mentioned before, the big black wire goes into the battery minus. That should be the only wire on there, so that all the current going in or out of the battery is measured through there. Pretty easy to install and hook up with your phone. The Bluetooth app is pretty informative as well. It has uh, history and everything like that. Okay, so this is the control panel for the solar charge controller. I'll just light it up here. So we can look at monitoring. We've got what the solar panels on the roof are pulling in, what's going into the battery, and what the loads are. And we can go to specific items by using the down arrow. So we can look at our charge energy, we can look at what's happening with the battery, 0.2 amps going in, and we can look at the PV on the roof, which is our solar panels. We're pulling down 3.3 amps, even on a cloudy day, so 50 watts. Our charge controller is 18.2 degrees Celsius, and our load is 4 amps. So if we go back to the main page for monitoring, it gives us some pretty good information. But again, I really rely on the smart shunt because I think that really tells the story about where we're going and where we've been. But this is nice to have for a quick look as well. By far, this is the biggest consumer of power in our trailer. This is a Dometic DX140 140 liter compressor fridge. Very efficient. You can make ice in it. You can keep your food cold in it. It has different levels of cooling available to you as well. But I would say probably if we didn't have this fridge and still had the propane fridge, we could live with one lithium battery. Two gives us the option of having a little bit of a buffer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this fridge on and show you what it draws through the smart shunt. So as I mentioned before, the Dometic compressor fridge is the biggest consumer of power. Currently it's using six amps to get itself down to temperature. Okay, so let's talk about the roof solar panels. So when this trailer was built in 2017, you had the option for one or two 90 watt panels, which gives us a total of 180 watts. That's nice to think that you have that 180 watts, but that's only if the sun is directly overhead. Because of the curvature on the roof, it's usually the front or the back part of the panel that's being used. Where we did experience full sun was heading from Bakersfield into Las Vegas. The sun was directly overhead at noon the time we went, so we were getting some pretty good power. So as we were driving, the batteries were charging up. I'm just going to lift this up so you can have a look on the roof. So remember that flexible panels are not as efficient as glass panels. One of the main reasons is they're glued to the top of the trailer and they can't dissipate heat. Ideally, you want to have some ventilation underneath the panel to make sure that it runs as efficient as it can. That being said, they've been pretty good to us. We have no issues with their performance based on what they are. So all in all, I would probably go with a solid panel or a glass panel next time or something that's more efficient. Okay, so here's the Renergy 200 watt folding portable solar panel that we use. This one is made of glass and aluminum, so it isn't very light, although it is very efficient at converting sunlight into energy. The nice thing about it is it comes with some accessories, and one of those is its own solar charge controller on the back here. This is a PWM, and it's not as efficient as the MPPT charger that we have on board and that's why I don't use it. It's disconnected most of the time. One of the things you can do with that is it comes with jumper cables that if your battery in your vehicle is dead, you can hook directly from the panel up to the vehicle to charge using the solar charge controller. You can't hook a panel directly to any battery. You've got to have some sort of regulator and that's what your solar charge controller does. So on a good day with good sun and no shade, we get about 10 amps out of this, which is sufficient for helping us supplement what we're pulling off the roof of the trailer. On a really good day when the trailer's in the sun and this panel is working, we're getting about 18 amps. 
So all in all, pretty pleased with it. Highly recommend it. Renogy makes a pretty good product. And there's the specifications there. You can look them up online as well. Like I said, it isn't light, but it is efficient. So in order to hook the panels up to the trailer, you need some sort of wiring. So what I've done here is I took the wiring that came with it and I cut off the ends of the MC4 connectors and I put them into a regular old household plug. This is a 15 amp plug. On the other end, we have the SAE two pin polarized plug going into the other end of this. So what this allows us to do is to use a regular old household extension, long or short, big or small. It's just a little more versatile than having wires running across your campsite. We talked earlier about the factory charge controller that's built onto the Renogy. This is the accessory kit that comes with it. So two alligator clips, two MC4 connectors fused, of course. This will allow you to charge the battery on your vehicle, or if you have somebody in your camping party that's got a dead battery, you can use that panel to charge their battery as well without having to go through your trailer. So we keep this inside the panel when it's folded up. When we go to use the panel, everything we need is right there. So there's our portable panel right now. It's working, it's all wired up. So I'll show you how all that hooks up together. On the back here, the MC4 connectors go into the adapter I made and that plugs into the extension cord. Run the extension cord back to the trailer. And in here we've got the other adapter plugged into the extension cord. Pretty clean, pretty easy to use and you don't have to use it if you don't want. The extension cord is multi-purpose, so you can use it for something else if you're off-grid and you've got enough solar hitting the top panels. So I went ahead and hooked up all the solar panels, pointed the portable ones into the sun, and we're getting about, well, depends on where the cloud is, between 8 and 10 amps total between the two systems. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I hope the video was informative for you. Just to let you know, the video is not sponsored by anybody. The trailer and all the equipment were purchased with my own money. I think the equipment that I chose through my research works well together. Does it match? Not really, but it does everything that I need. The big addition was the batteries and we'll see how those work out as well. They're fairly new to the marketplace, but if the trailer manufacturer has chosen them, I'm sure they've done their due diligence as well. So. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the section below. I'd be happy to get back to you. Happy trailering, everyone.